I just got back from Spain test riding the new 2020 BMW S1000XR, but this is my 2019 S1000XR. Am I gonna to wanna to trade this thing up? So a few headline figures, this model and the new one make 162 brake horsepower. Now the new bike starts at £14,285, or for the TE, the highest spec one, it's 16,220. Now this model went from 2015 to 2019, this was the last iteration of it, but it never really changed there, and the engine didn't change. And headline figures, the engine hasn't changed for the 2020. But this has always been, and still is, the adventure tour with no pretense about going off-road, and it's got the heart, it's got the engine, although retuned, of an S1000RR. So the new bike's still got this 999cc inline four engine, and it is based on the engine that was fitted to, to this bike. But what we all expected to see was the shift cam, which is in the R1250GS and of course the new S1000RR. We expect to see that carried over into the new model, but it didn't come. Now, BMW tells us that's because these bikes don't really need working much over 9,000 RPM. They're more about the mid-range. And in their words, fitting shift cam would have been a shift scam. So there's no shift cam. Honestly, I don't think it needs it. Uh, it might have been something that would have made people want to want to change over, but actually BMW seemed to have focused on something else with, uh, with the new model. So both this, my old bike, and the new one make 162 brake horsepower at 11,000 RPM and 84 pound foot at 9,250 RPM. That is plenty, and I've never felt like this needed anything more lower down. As it is a detuned s 1000 rr motor, it doesn't need that peakiness. Now the shift cam obviously can give you the mid-range performance and the high-end performance, but when they're not going for the super high-end in this motor, it does kind of make sense not worrying about the shift cam. When 162 brake horsepower became just the mid-range, I'm not really sure, but it doesn't really need it. And if you look at the specs, it does look like the new bike has the same engine as this, but actually it has been changed a lot, pretty well all the way through. And that's because the new model meets Euro 5 emissions. So the fact that BMW has kept the same performance, on paper at least, or peak performance on the new bike as they did in this old one, that is a pretty impressive thing to have achieved. So on the launch, it was a really horribly wet trip. It was appalling. But what we could gather from there is the new bike does feel not quite as, I don't wanna say sharp, but it doesn't feel quite as aggressive as this previous model. Certainly in rain and road mode, you could really feel that it was just easing back a little bit. Um, the thing is, actually in those, in those modes, I mean, it just felt, a little bit choppier. Uh, in fact, in, throughout all the modes, it just felt like as you rolled off, there was a little bit more snatch as, as, the, as the fueling cut. And certainly in rain and road modes, at low revs, it just felt a little bit more hesitant. Now, if you've got one of these bikes, one of the old ones, try the new one, see what you think. Try it on the roads that you ride and find out how it compares to you. The good thing is the new bike does still sound awesome. Now, this has a straight through exhaust, it's quite a big end can, but it is straight through until it gets to the, um, the valve and then to collector box underneath. The new can's smaller, which looks really cool, and that's part of the weight saving on the new bike, but the new uh, collector box is a lot bigger. But the way I've tucked it away, it does look pretty neat. I'm not gonna comment on the aesthetics of the new, well, I will. I prefer the style of this old bike, but I am biased. And if I've got to be honest with myself, there are some very neat touches on the new machine, like the cubby box on the top of the tank, which you can put coins in or toll booth passes. Uh, the, the LED headlights are very cool. They've got the cornering ability on them. To be honest, actually, the, the lights on this model are outstanding, especially for a motorbike. Uh, but even before you fitted the um, Denali spots that I've put on this bike, they are really good headlights. It's one of the few bikes I really enjoy riding around at night on. But there are some good touches on it. Uh, whether or not you like the overall styling, that's purely down to you. The good thing is with that new exhaust, it does still sound incredible. It's always had a really lovely throaty roar, this bike. And it's, it doesn't really seem any different on the new machine. All I would say is I never noticed any of the pops and bangs that you get in Dynamic and Dynamic Pro mode. Uh, as you roll off the throttle, you get this bang, bang as you're, as you're 
you know, is you're decelerating, which is great, except when you're in a village, then it's really irritating. You're trying to come off really gently because it just keeps popping and you know it's artificial and it just makes you sound wrong. Now, we couldn't really measure it on that launch. It'd take a lot of long-term testing, but economy is apparently up by 3.4 miles per gallon on the new machine. Now, I'm pretty heavy-handed with this bike. I'm only getting about 35 miles per gallon, but I do a lot of back roads, local back roads, and really enjoy thrashing it. Uh, looking at fuelly.com, typical riders are getting 43.8 miles to the gallon out of their S1000 XRs, that's the 2015 to 2019 models. That would give a theoretical tank range of up to 193 miles from this 20 litre tank. New bike still a 20 litre tank, so with the better economy, from full to dry, you could get 208 miles out of it. Obviously, some people are going to get better economy, some people are going to get worse, but it's got a good old range on this bike. So the big question probably you want to know, if you own one of these, is do the bars still vibrate? The S1000 XRs were well known for a vibration problem. When they first came out in 2015, it was particularly noticeable. Uh, and BMW quickly modified the bar risers to have rubber damping inside. Now, they actually changed, anybody who came in, they changed them for them for a good period, and then they could upgrade when it was well out of that period. But they did support it, and when I bought mine, it wasn't a massive problem, but I did start to notice that it started to irritate me. Now, Evo Tech Performance make weighted bar ends for these, which do pretty well get rid of the vibration. They're really good. I've actually got the Evo Tech Performance bar handguard protectors on here. Now, obviously the handguards come with a bike, but you see these metal bars. These, added with the weights in there and everything, they give it even more weight, and honestly, it's gone. The new bike, I couldn't find it. Uh, I was going through the revs, I was really trying to find that spot where it would vibrate. Now, the gear ratios have been changed on the new machine. That's kind of how you, partly how you get the better economy. It also moves the rev range for your specific speed. So at a cruising speed of 70 mile an hour, the engine's working a little bit slower. I couldn't find it. Even going up and down the speed, I couldn't find the vibration. It felt like mine. Now, if you've got one of these old models and you're a Bennett's Reward customer, you can get 10% off at Evotech Performance. So it's definitely worth checking out. Have a look at the link in the description. So the new bike's lighter, 10 kilograms BMW says, but on paper, it's two kilograms. Now that's because they're saying 10 kilograms based on how people tended to review the bike or how they tend to get one. And the old ones used to come with luggage racks. Now I've got the Sport SE. I did lash out and get the top spec one. Uh, it was a treat for my wife and I, um, but it did have the BMW luggage racks on it. With all those racks, then yes, it was 10 kilograms saving because the new bike has got integrated luggage racks on it. It is a really neat system. It is cool. Oh, it also hasn't got a, um, luggage rack on the rear, you have to buy the uh, top box rack separately, which obviously brings some weight back up. And it is a clever system. But of course, if you've got one of these and you've got the BMW luggage, your luggage isn't gonna fit the new bike, apart from your top box should fit the, the new top box carrier. But your panniers, no, you're gonna need to sell them. If you're trading in, probably worth selling the panniers separately unless you get a good deal from your dealer. Now I've got the Jivy luggage racks on here because I use Jivy Trekker luggage. Now, I absolutely love this luggage. These racks, you can remove them so I can have it bare. I tend to leave them on, they kind of give a little bit of crash protection. Um, but I, also, I just can't bother to take them off. But they are very quick release, it comes with a key and you can take them off. So, obviously, I've got the Jivy top box plate on the back, which just looks really neat. I really like it, it's nice thin aluminium. Um, but yeah, with these removable racks, I use the Jivy Trekker luggage because I've got the 33 litre side cases, which uh, they allow it, me to filter a lot easier. Uh, my wife and I like to go into London and, uh, and you know, when we're touring, we wanna to be able to get through traffic. So 33 litre side case, we can still carry stuff. I have a massive top box on the back as well. I can carry my luggage, absolutely brilliant. So realistically, you know, it's two kilograms weight saving. By the time you put your luggage on, you're gonna be doing stuff with this. You know, there is a bit more. It's very, it is still very impressive, bearing in mind that LED lights require heavy heat sinks. Uh, you've got the uh, UO5 regulations. They've done a lot of work to new bikes. It's impressive, they have still saved weight. What really makes a difference though is the bike has the same seat height on paper, and obviously you can get different options for that, but it's also got a slightly narrower seat, so you've got a smaller standover angle, and that means you can get your feet down that little bit easier. And I like that. Um, I have dropped this bike. Uh, I just tumbled outside the house, just turned wrong and, and fell over inside. Lucky I, my Evotech Performance crash protector saved it. Um, and I stumbled on the launch. I'd like to say it was in the, 
you know, in the spirit of testing, but I just slipped and I caught it. It's impossible to say whether I wouldn't have caught it on this, but I just felt a little bit more sure-footed. So I do like that. But the new seat looks very similar and it certainly cups your bum a lot like this one, but I felt I was just sliding forward a little bit more. It didn't feel quite as comfortable for me as this one. But that could be because the new bike has narrow bars that are set further forward. So it's changing your riding position more. Just, just a fraction, it's putting a little bit more weight over the front. Again, if you're thinking about changing from this to that, give it a go and see what you reckon. Now, when I bought this bike, having DESA, Dynamic Electronic Suspension Adjustment, was an option or something you had in the, the higher spec bikes. I've got it on here and I do really like it. I don't normally like uh, electronic suspension because I like to, I'm not a really, really fast rider or anything by any means, but I like to know what the bike, what I think it's gonna be doing. Now, this machine, it doesn't suddenly change. You're never aware of it working its magic and, and changing things. And you have the two modes, road and dynamic. On dynamic, I use that when I'm doing back roads on my own and really enjoy myself and kind of going for it. Uh, if I'm on a, a motorway or if I've got my wife on the back, I put it on road, which just softens the damping off that little bit. The new bike, all of the new models come with DESA, which is impressive to see that they've got uh, electronic suspension as standard, it's very good, but only the TE model or the dynamic package, which costs 1,250 pounds, only those have the DESA Pro. So if you have DESA, you only have road damping. Now, if you imagine we've got track performance and comfort down here. On this bike, road gave you a damping range about that. On the new bike, road gives you a damping range like this. It can go right down into comfort. It can soften itself right up for, right, it can soften itself right up for a more comfortable ride. The thing is, it can get really soft to the point that it doesn't feel like there's any damping. Riding down the motorway, if you're doing a lot of long distance touring, it could be something you really appreciate. But I found, because I'm looking for it, I'm trying it out while I'm there, jump up and down on the bike, you can feel it go boing, boing. And it just felt a little bit strange. But to be fair, if you're just cruising down the motorway, that's fine. What bothered me was as we came off of some of these Spanish motorways, down onto a little roundabout, as I was going around the roundabout, I could just feel it bouncing and that really put me off. So I run it in dynamic mode, which remember you have to have the uh, DESA Pro to get that. So if road damping has got this much latitude, dynamic has still got a huge latitude, but it's raised slightly higher. On the previous bike, you had that and that, now you've got that and that. So I left it in dynamic, uh, which firmed it up a little bit, but I could still feel it getting soft sometimes. And I just, personally, I don't like feeling that the bike's doing something, feeling that the bike is changing things. I like on my bike that I can leave it in dynamic and I have the choice to think, I'm gonna put it in road. It just feels like I've got that extra little feature. The new bike, to me, road seemed pretty pointless. So if you're gonna buy one, make sure you've got that pro. Have a go yourself. The, the important thing to know is, the reason BMW made a lot of the changes to the new bike is because a lot of customers or potential customers apparently found this machine too sporty, too hard, too firm, too aggressive. So they've, they've not blunted it. It's still a sports, it's still an S1000 RR at heart, but they've just made it that little bit more accessible. They've made it that little bit softer and easier to get along with. And that's my point. If you bought one of these bikes because you love how it feels, you love that performance, that sporty, aggressive nature, that's where you really need to try the new one before you put your money down to chop in. The screen on the new bike is still very good. You, uh, you still get good uh, weather protection from it. I never noticed any real um, buffeting from it. Certainly on the F900XR launch, you can uh, see a link to that video. Uh, you know, do watch that one. Great bike, but the screen was really buffety. Really impressed with this screen. And the, the new one's no, you know, it, it's still just as good. But what I do like is they put a lever on that makes it that little bit easier to open. This one's really easy. It's a great screen. They put a lever on there that just allows you to flip it up and down a little bit easier. Nice little touch, nice little design touches on it. They've clearly thought about a lot of the stuff that's going on into it. And one of the big things I do really like is you've finally got some storage space under the seat. You can get some stuff under there. This you've got next to nothing. You know, I have to split all my, um, tools and stuff up and my puncture repair kit to get it under this bike and I can get a disc lock under it but you've got a bit more space in you and it shows a bit of thought you know I like being able to get a lock under the seat of my bikes. I do love the traditional rev counter on my dash but the new one's got a TFT display and it is very good you can see lean angle DTC that's it's a good dash especially in sport mode although I wish they'd let you default to sport mode it always goes back to standard mode which is still good but I like seeing all the lean angles and everything like that. 
The new bike also, you can download a free app. It is free, unlike some other manufacturers who like to charge for their connected apps. This one's free and it is by far the best connected app I've ever worked with. Uh, it allows you to completely look at your ride on a map, see your g-forces throughout the ride, your lean angles, when ABS was cutting in. It'll also link to the dash and give you turn-by-turn -turn navigation. Personally, I'm gonna stick with my TomTom, -tom, but it's another nice little feature to have. The new bike is still an outstanding machine. Personally, I'm not gonna be chopping mine in anytime soon. Maybe things will firm up. There have been bikes like KTM released the Super Duke GT. When that first came out, it was very soft. The damping, you could only really use one mode. Everything else just seemed too soft. I wouldn't be surprised to see it maybe get tweaked. For me, it's not what I want. For a lot of riders, BMW aren't daft. They clearly know their market. You don't get to be one of the most successful manufacturers in the world by not knowing your market. And I think there is a market for people wanting something that's that little bit less aggressive than this. But if again, if you're somebody who bought this bike because it's so aggressive, do go and try one before, before you put your money down. What do you think? Would you be wanting to change this bike for the new one or would you want to stick with this for a good few years? I'll be sticking this for a good while yet. But let me know in the comments below and make sure you subscribe for all our new reviews. We've got all the latest bikes on here and also check out bennettsbikesocial.co.uk. There's a link in the description and you can get the full in-depth review of this and every other bike. We'll see you again soon. find that sweet spot in the revs. I couldn't find it. Hi darling, you alright? Oh uh, hang on, I was just shooting video. Hang on Trouble. Hello. Can I interrupt? Uh, yeah, but it doesn't matter. It'll probably be in an outtake. Bye bye. Where was I?